Welcome to the Smart Cell Inside or SCI demonstration series for the release 3.6. In this demonstration, I'll show you the interface functionality and capabilities of the Overview tab or Overview Report. I will cover the information displayed and how the output can be filtered for only a specific period of time or date range. So let's get started. So we're first going to log into Smart Cell or SCI. And the first page that comes up is the one that we're going to be talking about in this video, which is the Overview tab or the Overview page. Now the information provided is based on your time zone and it can be different for other users in different locations. So it's good to understand that specifically whenever you're looking at reports and the specific date times in which those reports are revealing. Now you can customize the overview report based on the date range that you can see up at the top here by either selecting dates or some of the pre-selected here such as today, last 24 hours, and of course the last seven days or do your custom range. Let's go ahead and do a custom range for now. We're going to start from April 1st to the 26th and we're going to apply that. The date range you select here affects most all of the reporting within this overview tab except for the Ruckus Smart Analytics section. This is based on long and short term trends of an AP and is displayed here for you to look at and know that there's some anomalies taking place for these particular APs listed. Now the Smart Analytics is the beginning of the Intelligent Network Manager, which is using a machine learning algorithms, and this system is designed to alert you of any anomalies from a short-term or long-term perspective of all the APs that are reporting to SCI. So because the anomalies are not based on hard thresholds, but rather on based on trends of each AP in the network, if a trend of an AP moves out of its short or long term trend, it's tagged and then of course displayed here. Now anomaly scores are attached to these, one being the lowest and 10 being the highest. If you see one with a high value here, then it might be something you need to investigate. So just because an AP is listed here, it doesn't necessarily mean there's something wrong with it, but rather while it's performing its duties, from a long term or short term perspective, SCI has determined that there is an anomaly and this gives you ability to at least see it from a list here and to see if it's something you need to act on or not. So the APs listed here are APs based on their anomalies yesterday as well as the last 30 days and then specifically they're either their user traffic score, their client count score, session count score, or even a short session ratio score and of course their reboot count score as well. Now within this table we can customize these columns by clicking on this gear and you can see that all are selected except for the, the AP Mac that we could select here and add to this table as well. Now each AP you see here is a click through link. You click on that link and it will go to the AP details tab of that particular AP and provide more information about specifically to that AP as well as for you to be able to see in more detail the anomaly that has been created there. We'll talk about that in other videos within this series and give you more detail about the AP details tab later on. So within the analytics, you can select by anomaly. So you select on these anomalies and you'll see that they'll be indexed based on that anomaly value. You can also go to the top of the columns and you can select those and it would either be itemized based on that column value as well. At the very top, you'll see that it provides you the amount of APs that it's found anomalies with that it would like you to take a look at. Do know that when if you set up an SCI and you start receiving reports and you're receiving and collecting data, this analytics works best after a month of data collection. So uh, once the, a month has been collected, uh, those trends can start being formed and give you a better understanding or a better idea and this anomaly system works better as that data continues to be collected. Now I did skip over the top, which we see here where we have the smart zones. This basically lists the amount of controllers that we have reporting to the SCI, whether it be a smart zone or a zone director, and then of course the total inventory of the access points that we have reporting. 
Uh, it also gives you a quick understanding of which APs that have reboots, and that is based on the date range that we have up here. So if we were to change this date range for the last seven days, we would see that this report would be updated. Uh, we would still see uh, specifically the APs with the reboots. Also, we can see varying data, of course, which ones are up, up and down, uh, and which ones might have some warnings on them as well. So as we scroll down on this overview page, we can see that the next thing is alarms. In the alarms section, we can hover over those based on the date range and be able to see what alarms that we are receiving there. Now in other sessions within this series, we'll be able to explain how you can go in and look in more detail of those alarms and which ones are throwing those alarms. But in this overview page, we simply are able to see uh, details specifically to the alarms that are receiving from an overall network perspective. Also in the events page, we can see we can hover over these and see there's many different events that can be reported here. And again, this overview tab is really just more of an overview or a single pane of just the details of your network environment of all APs and all the, the reporting entities coming into SCI. We can see that we have a top APs by client count, which gives us a quick rundown of the top 10 APs that have the highest client count reported on them on this given range of date range that we've provided here. And then, of course, we can see the total traffic. It can be broken down to receive and transmit, uh, and then also the uh, unique sessions that we have established, again, within the specific date range that we have listed up at the top here. We can also see a trend, uh, that this is a trend going upwards, uh, close to a 10% uh, increase over other periods or over uh, the values that we have on other dates that we have collected. So we also have a chart of the wireless LANs and it's based on the traffic flow. So the top wireless LANs that are receiving traffic is listed here. We can hover over them as you can see here. It'll identify that wireless LAN and the amount of traffic it received for the time period we have selected above. We can see the data is broken down by radio as well with this pane over the far left. We can see from a 5 gig and a 2.4 gig perspective what type of throughput and data that we have going through. And we can see that there's applications that can be reported as well. Now if the wireless LAN is configured for application identification, uh, that reporting information is sent to SCI as well and it can be reported here also. And down on the bottom right, we see a did you know section. This provides just relevant information in a sentence form, allowing you just various data of what is being collected within SCI. Every time you refresh this page, these can and will be updated with some different information that you can look at and review. Now a couple of other things I like to point out on this section and many other reports and we'll be repeating it in the other slides or other videos as well is that each one of these reports based on the the date range we select here we can download that either in a CSV or in a PDF format. We can additionally also schedule these so we can click on the schedule over the left hand side here if we want to we can cre create a new schedule we simply create that we provide a name here as we can see other tests there as well. We can select the format whether it be a PDF or a CSV that is sent out and of course then we can select it by daily weekly monthly quarterly and yearly values. Uh, and then we just simply list the email address or email addresses of the users that we would like for them to receive this data. A result of this would be that they would receive the report based on the repeat cycle that you've selected uh, and they would receive it based on the format that you have chosen. Thank you for taking the time of watching this video. We hope you have time to look at the other videos that are highlight the other tabs that we have within the SCI environment.